I would like to introduce a few of our um, the people that made this possible. Um, there are so many, but just a few. First of all, our amazing filmmaker, Jason Berg. You're here. Come on up. Thank you, Jason. Have a seat. Um, and, um, and now um, uh, from Artist Equity, Jillian Brown, who produced this and was there tirelessly. <laughs> Literally, you'd call her day or night and she was just on. Um, Next, our our producing partner uh, uh, Jennifer and my producing partner, our our, our wing woman, who um, not only worked on this as me now, but also produced along with Jillian, uh, the greatest love story never told, Courtney Baxter. <laughs> And it's funny, when I was outside just now and Amazon was saying, so you're going to, you know, do the q and I said, so I'll bring Jason and Jillian and Courtney up. They went, and Jennifer. <laughs> I forgot. Um, the amazing, the, the woman who, who makes all of this possible. Um, there's, you know, it's funny. They say, don't meet your heroes, but she's everything I ever wanted her to be. Come on up here, Jay. <laughs> Okay. There you go, guys. Okay. Okay. Quick Q and A. Quick Q and A. So we called. We called the millions of people, and here's the uh, top questions that they asked us to ask. Oops. Okay, Jennifer, this one's for you. Why did you do this documentary? And 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 did you hesitate at all? It wasn't my idea. Right. It wasn't my idea to photograph every single moment of doing this. Um, you know, to be honest, when we, we started making the film, it just kind of got more and more bizarre. And my husband, who had a front seat to the whole thing, really was the one who was like, we should be capturing this. And he bought on this amazing team. And, uh, and that's kind of how it happened. And Did you hesitate at all? Um... <sighs> I mean, I feel like along the way I was hesitant, you know, it's like stutter stepping the whole way, knowing that I wanted to go forward, knowing that I had this tremendous impulse and kind of like drive to to say something like I had not wanted to say in my whole life, you know, just in my in being an artist and even in growing up, like I've never wanted to kind of share something in that way, the way I did when I got back together with Ben and we started making this album and I have some of my team here who made the album with us. Um, but it was just very clear to me that I had to, one, make this music because it was just kind of very organically pouring out of me what um, I wanted to say about love and what I had discovered and what I wanted to share. And then in that kind of revisiting the 20 years in between right. was inevitable. And so as that started happening, you know, you start realizing there's so much more to the story to tell than just the music and just the movie. There's even more than that. Right. And so, and it became kind of a quest of like, I have to do this. I have to get this done. And so. And now, I mean, it's just so extraordinary when you see the amazing reviews for this and for your your original, the Amazon original. You know, we all seem so smart, right? <laughs> in, in retrospect. Um, Jason, you've worked with Jennifer on several other projects, including yes. her first documentary, Halftime. How was this one different? You know, Halftime was, it was fast paced. We were, you know, going, you know, doing the Super Bowl and we were traveling between New York, LA, Miami, and we were just moving, moving, moving. I think the difference with this is we were still. And, you know, there was this this six week period or eight week period um, with a lot of, you know, emotional scenes and per very personal, deeply personal scenes. And for us, it was as a crew, 
it was, uh, you know, we concentrated on giving her the respect of, you know, you know, us being there, but not being in her face, which I, I, I do pretty good sometimes. Sometimes I'll fall or I'll hit you, something. You do have a tendency to trip over to things trip. backwards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, this was, you know, obviously deep, deeply personal. And I'm just very grateful that, you know, I was asked to do this because um, working with Jennifer for the last six years has been, you know, one of the highlights of my life. I understand. Um, Jillian, this is your the first time you've worked with Jennifer. Were you nervous? <laughs> I, you know, I was I was nervous to work with everyone, Elaine. I was nervous to work with you. I mean, it was like I, I, I come from the doc world. I come from indie films. You know, all of a sudden, I found myself on this avenue of giants with these Hollywood legends. You know, Ben and Matt, of course. Uh, but then Elaine and Benny and, and you, Jennifer, um, and I was very nervous and excited and honored and also curious, um, curious to see where you wanted this to go. Uh, so many films, so many docs, I think, out in the world right now are about famous people, are about public figures. Uh, and I was really curious, you know, first to hear from Ben and then even more importantly, to come onto your set and Dave Meyer's set and to see what story you wanted to tell um, and I remember that very first meeting. Jennifer invited us and, and Benny to sit with her at her studio rehearsal. Uh, and we sat down and three hours later in a box of tissues, I think all of us cried. I knew yeah, what that I one scene actually yeah, that was from where I talk about, um, well, you know, where I talk about um, basically how the world saw me and how I saw myself was that first day. <laughs> Welcome. First day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and it never really stopped. I think that set the bar and set the tone for everything else. And, and it was it was such a deep honor. So thank you. Were you surprised at how much access she gave you? I was surprised and I felt a great responsibility. Uh, you know, it's it's your personal life. It's your husband's personal life. And I think all of us approach the project with that understanding um, and are very grateful with uh, what we were able to share ultimately. So thank you. Court, you're our producing partner on everything we do mm -hmm. and hopefully everything we will do. Mm -hmm. But on this one, you produce This Is Me Now and you produce the documentary. Yes. <laughs> you were pulled in a lot of directions and I know because we spoke every second of the day, did you find yourself conflicted at any point? Um, the short answer is yes, definitely. Uh, I feel like almost every day in this job, I ask when you have multiple things to do that are urgent and you have multiple projects that you're trying to service and you want to make sure that you're doing a good job on all of them, where do you start? What do you do next? Constantly wondering. And I can't say that I have the answer, but for us, it's a lot of trusting your team that's around you to everybody participate and help for the greater good. And, you know, also listening to your gut. And at least in this case, if we were having a stressful day or something was difficult on set, I could, you know, step away and think, well, maybe that made for a good scene in the dock, you know, I hope. <laughs> At least something compelling and real. Silver lining. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, I know I hate every single frame of film I am in. <laughs> every single time I look at myself, what is the hardest thing for you to let them see? In a way, I, I think people would think I'm so used to being in front of a camera and I'm quite comfortable with it. And that is true. I am comfortable with it. But when you are kind of sharing your you, you don't have a script that you're reading and playing a character or you're not singing a song that you've written and you know is going to go out to the world, but you're just living your life and really sharing your deepest thoughts because that's what you have to explore to tell this story and to do what you're trying to do. That one for me was very scary. The other scary part was that I was bringing into it, you know, uh, my husband who, you know, was kind of the reluctant, you know, participant, silent participant and all. <laughs> it was like, I, I just said to him, I was... <laughs> We were the, during the one of the parts and we I was like, is this weird? He's like, yes. <laughs> I said, you're crazy. <laughs> he told him he was crazy, not me. You're crazy. Um, but I know that I'm the crazy one. I, I get that part. Um, but I really feel like as an artist, 
you ha- you have to you have to be vulnerable. You have to, even when you're playing a role, right? Like you have to get down to the real parts of yourself to share what it's like to be human. And that is a scary thing to do. Because this was real. This, I mean, I was there. I had the first row seat. This was real. There was nothing staged. That was, th- those were real private right. moments, I thought. Right. And so, you know, it's, it, th- those are scary things to share. I don't think anybody wants to be filmed here day and night for six weeks and then have us put together something <laughs> to show it to everybody. Be like, oh my God, I, you know, and I do, I look at it and I, there's many moments where I'm like, oh my God. Not even just the way I look, but the way I talk, the way I move, everything, everything about yourself. You kind of like start analyzing. You're like, oh, that's what I look like when I'm not like acting or singing or dancing on film. You know, it's that's the real me. And so that was, you know, scary. I thought it was beautiful. Um, Jason, what were some unexpected moments you captured that ended up making the cut? That's the first question. And how come you promised me that gym scene would never make the movie? <laughs> I love the gym scene. That's the best scene in the whole movie. You know, I think mean, it's it's it shows the, the such beauty of you know yours, Anna's, and and Jennifer's relationship. And she's having a hard moment, and you guys are there to kind of lift her up and and be her wings, you know. And I think that in and of itself, just you know, is 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 beautiful. So I'm I'm happy that and, that and scene was, is in the film. But it was also a great moment because he was coming over to film rehearsal. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I just was like, I, I just can't rehearse today. I'm too exhausted. And- and were, it happened you were very incredibly sad. You couldn't be at air. It, we were, you were devastated. Yeah. I, 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 it's funny. You know, I sometimes think when I watch those reality shows, oh, they have to know a camera. I didn't even realize, I didn't, like, you don't even know it's there. You're so focused on, you know, was there any other unexpected moments that, that you wrestled with and putting in the film and the edit? No, I think, you know, when you, document, like Jennifer was saying, such personal moments, you know, th- throughout this process, you know, there's times when we're filming where, you know, you say, I wonder, I wonder if, is this going to make it into the film? You ha- you know, you hope certain things make it into the film, but like she said, I couldn't imagine being on that side of the camera and having my life documented like that. I'm, I'm too nervous to do, <laughs> to do that. I'm nervous up here right now, <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, I, I'll give this to Jen, but, but you all can answer. A theme that the documentary explores, I thought beautifully, as Jennifer Lewis said, is that the prize for aging is wisdom. Jennifer, what does that mean to you right now? You know, um, picking all of the, the the Zodiacs, I picked, you know, Jennifer Lewis specifically because that's who she really is, right? Like you saw, you know, just who she was and that's what she bought. I wanted her to bring that to the documentary and she's always kind of spewing out this wisdom uh, that's hard earned from a life lived fully, you know? And that means you inevitably have really dark and hard moments. And so for me, that that's what it is. It's, it's the survivor. It's what this is me now is about, right? I said, this is me then was about like, was me at that time, 20 something years ago now, where I was just like making my first albums and trying to become this person and all the dreams that I had and trying to be that, right? And become that. But this is me now is like, yeah, that was me then. Who I am now is a totally different person who's been through all of this stuff. Some of it was really, really painful. Some of it was really magnificent and just embracing all of that, the wisdom of going, this is who I am now and I'm going to really accept this person now and I'm going to forgive them. And it's the forgiveness of that. And that's why I like that the forgiveness part is in there because you kind of look back and go, oh, I really fucked up there. I really made a (laughs) terrible mistake there. I really did that. I really regret that I did that. And then when you get to a point where you go, you know what, that's where I was in my journey at that time. And I forgive myself that. And I accept that because it's made me who I am today. And today I'm pretty proud of who I've become. And I can, I can really embrace that person. And so to me, that's what this is me now is, uh, it's a statement of 
acceptance. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I know that through throughout this, as Benny and I would speak 50 times a day, he was so moved by this journey that he labored over daily. <laughs> and he would, um, he told me that very much like what you had just said, just about accepting the life lessons. And I think that message sort of permeates to, to many people. Um, Jillian, as producers, what do you and Artist Equity hope people will take away from the documentary? I mean, I can't imagine uh, a more exciting way to announce to everyone that Artist Equity is in the doc business as well. So, so thank you. Um, but but as, as women for a long time, other people told our stories for us. Uh, and, and it wasn't just women, but I, I think as a woman, I felt like my story was told a lot, our stories were told. Uh, and after a lot of hard work, we started, you know, reclaiming the narrative or owning the narrative. And that felt good, but I think what meant the most to me across this is watching Jennifer's This Is Me Now project and actually seeing you writing your narrative, authoring your narrative. Uh, and it felt like a totally radical thing and, and critically important. Um, you know, one of your lines in the film, you know, I, I didn't need to do any of this, but I want to, I think really resonated for me and, uh, and hopefully our company in that um, following that urge, that artistic urge, um, I think can be such a North Star for artists and filmmakers that sometimes we lose touch with. Uh, and I hope that people watching this remember to trust that feeling and to not just make the stories that they think they should make that fit in a box, but tell the stories that they, they deeply want to make to follow those desires and dreams. So those are the best stories of all. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> Port, do you have a favorite scene? I have many favorite scenes, um, but I think watching it tonight, because I'm always thinking what's what's resonating tonight, it was watching the montage of This Is Me Now and Hearts mm -hmm. and Flowers after, you know, we labored over the mud and getting everything right in the costumes. And I think it just does a beautiful job of showing that exhaustion, almost for lack of a better word, of just doing something over and over again until you get it right. And that level of commitment that Jennifer had, the dancers had, Dave, Nathan, our whole team to so just get everything to be right and to see it up on this screen and see how hard everybody was working in that moment. It's for me, it's so special because it's just a reward of like, okay, we pulled it off and it's up there on a the screen now. So it's great. <laughs> Jennifer. Yes. What would you want to say to Jennifer 20 years mm -hmm. from now? 20 years from now? Yeah. The future Jennifer? The future Jennifer. What do you want to tell her? Oh. <laughs> the future Jennifer. I don't even know. That's such a good question, but I hate it because I don't know what to say. 20 years from now, what would what do I want to say to that person 20 years in the future? I can give you a hint. Okay. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you took aren't you glad I took the advice and started to celebrate every day and realize everything I am instead of everything I'm not? That's a good one. Yeah. So yeah. you had that, you, you set me up. I, you set me up so you could throw in a good line. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Will there be a this is me someday we can all look forward to? This is me. This is me forever. This is me. This is me. I don't know what the next one yeah, would be. I don't know. That no, I really feel like this is the, the closing of one journey. I do too. You know, this is, this, is, this is a real kind of like moment where I never thought there'd be a, a this is me now. Uh, and so when that happened, you know, like I said, and kind of it, it closes the loop on a certain thing that I have been searching for my whole life. And now I hope that I can start to the next process, which is truly learning how to heal, you know, um, from the things that I've accepted about my journey that have been difficult and and going back and fixing those because now I have that bed to lie in of love and and uh, f for myself and in my life. And so that's to me the next, you know, iteration. But at least we know like true love is out there. It, it exists. And magic, right? I mean, it really is. And magic. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Watch it tomorrow.